We're gonna do attack. All good. Oh, it's already from like middle of the round. That's unfortunate. Let's see. Okay, so it's 30 seconds into the round. Your teammates are already on site. You're holding the flank with the alarm board. Your turret got destroyed. I don't know where, but it got destroyed. Okay, so you guys, first thing, um, you guys don't have sage, so planting there is going to be a problem. You also ha don't have smokes. So whenever someone is planting on A, you need to change your attitude. Uh, you, need to, you need to be helping the player that plants. In general, he shouldn't be even planting, because you need to kill players on site before planting in situations like this. So essentially... Like, when, when, when your team doesn't have smokes on bind, like here, like, you need to call out the people to not plant till you get the kills, or when, if someone is, like, holding them. Look, the KO is totally exposed. Not a single smoke, no sage wall, and one player is in lamps, the other one is looking at lamps for no reason at all. So, essentially, you're the only player that can help him plant. You need to change your attitude when the composition is like this. Right? Because you, can, you cannot hold the flank. Um, I don't know what happened in the first, the first 30 seconds, but you still have like your, your alarm about there, right? To avoid the flank. So you should be with the team on site, I guess. Like even standing in, in, the, in this spot to have the alarm about active and trying actively to help the KO to plant or discourage him from planting and instead going for the... Um, uh, for the kills, right? Like, putting your Nano Swarm right here makes no sense, because the plant is not spi uh, the spike is not planted. You just literally just use your Nano Swarm for nothing, right? And you should be, like, you should be even peeking out of that smoke to help him. I mean, okay. You have low sensitivity, but you have good control over it, which is nice. And what is very important, you're taking your time to aim. You're actually putting the crosser on the headshot without panicking, I'm buying. which is very important. Reloading. All right. Reloading. You're thinking where to put it? Are you a kill Jermaine or not? Let's see. You should be using your turret, like... For attacking, even. You know? Yeah, this is, like, a very good example as well. I feel like... In this round... You're currently looking at nothing. That's a very... Um, so... Um, when I was when I was watching uh, the vod from Garrett, he had really the same issue. He had the same issue. Right now, for the first fifteen seconds of the round, you are not looking at anything. You know, like you are you are not watching showers, you are not watching short, and you're not watching hookah, and instead you watch just this wall. So essentially, your team is playing four v five. I got better at that now. Good for you, Garrett. Like, that's for sure one of the things that you need to you need to fix. The turret is good, but then, look, it's an eco. You're very passive. You put the turret out, but you're not fighting when your gun is actually very badly needed. Because it's an against an eco. Why not leave the turret to hold your back? Fuck. Why, why not put your per turret, like... Even in this spot here, right? And push side with the rest of the team. Or just even put it here. On short, looking back. And push again with the team. Or even just put the turret like you did. And push with the team. I honestly believe that it will be more important right now. Remember, you're playing without smokes. Spike down A. So you need to get kills. Right now, you're looking at lamps. 
without checking your corners. You don't have to look look at lamps. Look, look at your movement right here, right? You're moving like this. Into lamps. Your teammates already have control over lamps. That means that no one is standing here. You already have a gun. There's no better gun than yours, so there's no reason to pick anything. So the only thing that you should be paying attention to is here. You know? This is the only thing that you should be paying attention to right now. Because right now here, you're looking at something that is completely, like... It's completely unimportant. Right? There's a... There's no reason to be looking like this. And you're get, losing a lot of health because of that. Now we got short... Sh okay. Try using ADS on such a long range with the Spectre. On this range, try using ADS and bursting. Like, the gun gets ten times better. Sage killed. Guys, if I'm gonna see someone flaming weak as garbage for sending his VOD... He's a player from Silver 2. He wants to get better. I'm telling all of this stuff for people to get better. And I can guarantee you that 50% of you are probably going to learn most of the shit that I'm going to explain to him. So, stop being an asshole. Okay? If I'm going to see any kind of, like, fucking... Weird remarks. I'm gonna insta ban you, okay? Well, that's a bug. One enemy remaining. Plant the spike. Satchel out. I like the fact that you have keybinds for using specific pings, like plant the spike. You know his lamps. You know his lamps. See? Not paying attention. You're you're ultra focusing on something. Like you're. I think this is this is gonna be like one of your main issues. It seems like you're when you're um when you're thinking about something, you forget about the state of the game. That's like why you had the problem with. For the first 15 seconds of not holding anything because you were thinking you were trying to make a plan of what you're gonna do and you were during that time watching a wall and here you're so tunneled visioned on the nanosome to put it on spike that you completely ignore the fact that your teammate died in lamps and that's only one player remaining right so you are being like, completely focused on only this, which is also not important right now for this game. And also, um, if you're playing Killjoy, or any... I mean, Killjoy specifically, because you can activate the nanosomes. Let, let me explain it this way. Putting a nanosome on Spike only makes sense if you're not playing on site. Because if you're playing on site like this, let's say I'm going to stick to this position, and I'm going to be playing, playing in Kabi. Where do I want to put my nanosomes? One, I'm going to put here, so no one can push me, right? When I'm going to hear like an audio cue or something, or someone is even going to like try to push me here, because I'm going to have contact, I'm going to pop the nanosome in this spot, in here. Second nanosome, put it in lamps. You can use it as a... even maybe some kind of a trap, because if, you, if you're going to throw your nanosome, and it's gonna land in here, your opponents will gonna see it, and maybe he's gonna even shoot it, which will alert you that the guy is in lamps. And if not, if he's gonna pick you, then you can just swing, hide, activate uh, the nanosome, and just stop his push for a little bit. Because if you put the nanosomes on the spike, the only way that you can use them is if someone is on the spike. And if you're playing in this position, He's not going to be on the spike ever. You know? You can... Remember that your nanosomes are a very cool tool to actually stop people from pushing or just buying time in post plant. And you lost 400 credits, by the way, here. 
Think about it this way, this this as well, right? You just have to rebuy everything. You need to buy armor and 600 of equipment. The enemy only looks composed. Their hearts still at defense. You thinking about buying something? What's your plan? You didn't put a single piece of utility this round. You have been distracted. Like, your job is to always control a flank. Somehow. Right? If your plan is to go long B, you need to put something to stop a flank from happening. Your redemption would be putting a turret, an example here, watching this. Let's ignore the fact that your race is lurking on short. Okay. Okay, this, is, this also works because for some fucking reason, your race is in market still, and she's just holding the flanks. So you don't have to use your utility, but this is just moronic. So, in this case, you can use your turret as a contact. I like using the turret in this spot without, without like, peeking. I go, I hug the wall, I put it in here, like, in front of this shit here. So it can also discover players in garden. Bad cross replacement. Okay, that's that's the thing that we need to work on. So, ah, fuck me. You know what? Oh, this is this is the same thing that we got. I'm I'm not uh, sighing si sighing because I'm upset or something. I just need to um turn on the game. So let's mimic what you did in the round. You went here without doing any ut any utility. If your race wouldn't have been holding uh holding market. I think turret here would have made certain that you're not being pushed and flanked, right? Which helps a little bit the players in hookah. And now you check this corner. When you check in this corner, right, you want to hack this wall as much as possible to not get exposed from side. So when you're peeking like this, you get exposed from this side and this side. You want to avoid that. This is why you're going to hack the wall from this side and then you're going to be peeking this into, into, into this corner. Now, when you go here, you have to imagine, when you're going to be checking all of those angles here, you have to imagine to cut your map in front of you in pieces, right? Like, like pizza squares. Cutting the pizza. Oh, that's better. So let's cut the pizza. This is the first pizza square that you need to check, right? This is the first pizza square. So it's like, beep, I'm checking this. Second pizza square. Beep. There's an awkward position because you can be up top and here, right? Third one. Fourth one. Fifth one. Sixth one. And I'm checking all the corners. When I'm getting to this point, I'm gonna be check I'm gonna put my crosser a little bit forward. Uh, sorry, a little bit upward. So I can check those corners. And I checked every single angle without being exposed to this angle yet. Right? So now, when I checked all of those corners, I can be ready for the player to be here, and I'll be ready to shoot him. Right? Also, remember that you're a killjoy. What you can do is do this. You know? Look. Well, actually, no, 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 that will be too far away. But you can check those corners by putting it here, right? Like, you can... Yeah, I, don't, I don't play killjoy much, but... You can put it like here. And this checks your uh your yeah. this corner, but it doesn't check like yeah. if someone is standing on top of this. But you can be like you can check for this angle here. So that's also a possibility, remember. Or if you put the turret up, you can do this. If you check don't put the turret first. First check the first first three pizza slice. Right? One, two, three, maybe four. Right? Maybe even five. Like those. And then you can do this. And wait for the turret to fully rotate. 
he's gonna start shooting here right so this checks every single corner for you before you peek that and once this starts shooting and the opponent starts shooting at the turret that's your moment to strike you don't want to peek before he starts shooting the turret he needs to like break his attention because when he's holding like this right when he's holding like this and he's gonna ignore the turret. Then he still has a crosser on you. But once he's gonna start shooting at it, that's the moment when you swing and kill him. Turret might not see the omen there. No, it's it's seeing the omen. But the way that you picked, see, you didn't check any corners. You just fully fully swung without even having your crosser ready, right? You just always need to readjust your crosser as a habit. I'm actually, yeah. You should explain why farther away is better angle than close up. I literally explained that when doing this peek. I already explained it. Mm, do you agree with the idea of committing to clearing a corner and not checking at all? It depends on the situation. So I don't like this turret at all. And I'll tell you why. So you're putting the turret in a corner that, of course, checks this corner, checks this corner, checks this, right? When someone is pushing, but it doesn't check this. But if you reposition this turret once the barrier drops and you put the turret in here, then it holds showers push and short push and market push. Because this wall here is going to block, block the vision of the turret. So someone can be like hugging the wall and be standing here and you have a sense of false security when there's a guy with a vandal here. That's a vandal, by the way. You know? Oof, oof, oof. This is one of all, one of those things that you can also do. It requires quick reaction times. But as a killjoy, it's possible to do that. And I feel like you should be ready for this shit. So, as soon as this stun happens, right? Your phantom is not going to be as effective. But what you can do is you, you can literally just insta-swap to Nanoswarm. Insta swap to nano swarm. It doesn't let's ignore the boom bot here, okay? Because this should be a reflex in most cases. If you know that the player is from lamps, so he's he might there's a chance that he's gonna just next after the stun flash you here and wide swing from here and try to kill you. So what you try to do is you're gonna swap to nano swarm and you're gonna insta throw it here and just pop it, which buys you time. And the only angle that someone can peek you is from here, which is then easier to kill because this guy is going to be closer to you. So even when you stun, maybe you're going to hit him. But you're going to stop the push for four seconds from this angle here. Yeah, it's epic pen, Sebastian. Nice, good job on the cross replacement. I would actually like the Alamo bot. Um, so let's think about how do you play from an Alamo bot. Let's say you're gonna stay in lamps. Like, because you could stay in lamps right here. But you have the spike. So maybe you can drop it to someone else. Because you're an instrumental piece of this puzzle right now for the success of this round. Your utility is so important. It's holding pushes. For some reason, your teammates are completely clueless about what to do. This is like a very good example. Um, but you don't want to die in this round because you are instrumental when it comes to the utility. So let's think how do you want to play off this, right? If you're putting, if you're putting the, the, the Alamo bot to play off contact of it, right? Then you can either put it in this spot here, 
I mean here because otherwise it's not gonna have range like this right and then stand in this corner that you stand right now you can even just look at showers and and then when this activates you swing and kill right i don't know what this rain are gonna do but it's like let's let's not focus on that because if you put the alarm robot like you did here you're gonna have a bad angle Look, I'm going to make a comparison, okay? This is not maybe something that is applicable to this round, but I think it's important to learn how to play off your utility because you can apply the same knowledge to your turret or to your alarm bot and be certain that you can have it, like you can literally use this piece of utility as a non-functional player, right? This is an NPC that works for you and you can literally play off the contact of it. Right? So when you put the alarm bot here in this spot, and you're gonna stand in this spot to like watch showers for now, when this activates, the only angle, right, that the players might be, is like if someone didn't wide swing completely, then he's gonna be standing here, and when he's gonna be a activating the boom bot because it's gonna check him here, he's gonna go back. That means that you cannot play off contact because when you swing, he's gonna be behind cover. Unless, of course, he went here, but then the alarm robot will gonna give you info where he is. But the thing is, when you put the alarm robot in this spot, this player needs, needs to fucking commit. Like, he's committed. There's no way of going back. Which makes him an open target. So when you swing, he's literally not with nowhere to run. Like, he's standing in this area. This is where he's gonna where he's gonna be standing. Right? So when you swing into him, you can just full auto on this guy and aim like anywhere because he's gonna be also debuffed by the llama board because it should be like fast enough to to appear, and then you just kill him because of that, because he cannot hide. Right? Turret destroyed, so someone is flanking. I'm not sure if you're using even microphone, but you should probably be using a microphone. I know that it can be tough for uh, for many people, but telling your teammates here that that you're being flanked, just say flanked, or like say pushing market or something, flanked, right? Wait, can you nade you? What the fuck? I, I don't know, he's a moron. Good job. It's 2v3. Oh, oh, this is a tough... This is a tough situation. How they are dying... I, I'm, not sure, I'm not sure what is happening here. Just random morons. And two players on short, Kayo and Reyna. I literally killed in the back. Because... Most likely, they don't know that you're being flanked for market because you didn't say anything. Right? Think about it. If you would have say that you're being flanked... Look, the Reyna is in lamps and the turret is being destroyed right here. They're like completely oblivious. They have no clue what's going on. And the Fade dies as well. And those people have no clue what's going on. What, what is the Reyna even saying? He's saying about lamps, man. But then he looks at the position of the omen and he turns his back away. I'm oh, just stupid people, you know? Like, they're just stupid. That's about it. Now, you're being, now, you, now you know that you're being pushed from short. See? This is, this is a very good example of something that I was explaining on long. When you were checking this angle here, right? Like this. When you were checking to, to expose yourself. Once those two players died on short, you need to eliminate the angle that exposes you. Because right now, you're being exposed fully to short. And even though you only have 29 HP, you could be playing off it. Like, you could be playing to your advantage somehow, right? So, what you do is, once those two players are dying here, you should probably react pretty fast. So, there are two options. You push and hug this wall here, and hold the angle to lamps, right? Or, you use a nanosome, you bounce it like this, activate it. That doesn't even matter how you bounce it. Maybe you can put it here. You just have to activate it to stop the push. And then you s slowly reposition closer here. And maybe even use the second one just by time to maybe isolate the fight 
now, but this is like a very advanced strategy. So what is the most important is you need to reposition because you're exposed to short and you're going to die because of that. Yo, weak as garbage, are you still here? I am, but my voice didn't record for some reason. Ah, okay. Well, that's unlucky. Okay, I, I, I could give you like a coaching about the voice comes as well then. That, that's unfortunate. You had like pretty decent position, but you were still exposed to short and that's your problem. Right? Look. Your cross placement is actually not terrible. Right? It's actually not terrible. But you being shot in the back, like this race didn't even deal damage to you. And if you had like a better position, you had a chance at killing her, which means that you know that the last player is coming from short, and then you could also use the nanosomes to stop him from pushing. You didn't set up, again, anything, right? That might be an issue. Off your feet! They're pushing through hookah. Finish. Good, 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 good swing. I like the swing. You will so, uh, let me check your uh, positioning, wait. So, with this speed that you peaked here, there's absolutely no way that someone is going to be in this corner, unless it's going to be Omen TPing, but you would be hearing the TP here. So there's no need to check the left side. Against this composition, of course. Okay. Okay. Good job, good job. No, there's absolutely no reason for that. So this is the moment where your ultimate has no impact. Because it's like, it's gonna take 12 seconds to do anything, but it's not doing much yet. You could have, you know that this player was, from the comms of your teammates, you know that there's only one player on B. That means that other players need to rotate. Right? You need to, you need to like wait with your ultimate. Maybe not even use it this round. But if you use it, then do it like ten seconds later. You can buy so much time. You can buy so much time. It's actually insane, right? So putting this ultimate here as well, it's probably not a good choice because you can play it from have from from garden here, and just buy more time, even more time because of that. Because you're gonna cut off hookah, and um and sight completely as well, right? So. You can wait like five seconds here based on the info of where the opponents are playing and play it like five, ten seconds later. You know that one is long right now. You have no utility, so you... Wait, wait, how, how do we play this? If the fate dies, we can't really do anything, but... only Okay, you know about two players now. So unfortunately for you right now, helping the fade is very fucking problematic. Because you know that one guy is playing on site. So you cannot you cannot go here and here to play of contact of fade because you're gonna be exposed with your back. So you need to stay in this line. Like you cannot cross this line essentially. So fade is on her own. Destroyed. Oh. No, I'm gonna... <laughs> yeah, but if you're a fade here, you just don't peek. Just fucking hold and buy time. Not dying is more important than trying to get a kill here. Just not dying is just so important for the fade. Good cross replacement. Reload, not needed. Remember, he can be already on site. You give an audio cue that you're reloading. Seven bullets are enough to kill people. Mm, I feel like um, you don't need to buy the the armor here because you have 25 they play on a full buy I would not buy this 
because it will allow me to uh, like you're still like prepped for actually fighting but building up economy is important there's not no one is gonna be here this right here this is something that you didn't learn yet so you have to imagine how much time does it take for a person to quietly push through showers otherwise you're gonna hear it right if someone is like pushing through showers full speed you're gonna hear this from here but if if it's on shift you need to start imagining how much time does it take because right here no one is gonna be peeking from this you know no one is gonna repeat from this absolutely no chance so you don't have to hold this you could have just sprayed the wall with the KO or help him like hold an angle and that's about it And for, okay, one more thing. I know that you, three of your players in the hookah are going side, but you're now putting all of your eggs into one basket, which is going through hookah. And that is super fucking risky. Whenever I try, whenever I play bind, um, whenever I play bind, I try to not go into hookah with the spike. Typically, like, two or three players are going hookah, and the rest goes long with the spike. So they... The point is, if you go with the spike on long, then you can always rotate to the other side, uh, other side of the um, of the map by using the TP and go to showers, right? But if you go into hookah, then you're stuck because you won't have to go for market. And if they are TPing through like monkeys, right? Then you're being pincered and you cannot like. And if you die in this position, the team is fucked. It's absolutely fucked, right? But I can understand that you're going through hookah this time because every single of your teammates is in here. So going alone through long with your spike is gonna be most likely ending. Plants, right? Definitely use your turret for something before planting. 100% use it for something. I would have probably put it... If I'm going like this, you have few options. You have no control of a ramp, no control of a garden. By the way, still someone can be garden. You can be literally killed right now from garden. So, few things, right? Turret, right? I would probably put the turret like here in this case to hold elbow, hold this when this disappears, right? And also hold garden. Because it's gonna it's gonna be pretty scuffed, but it is also an angle for the garden. And then when you plant here, you should probably not plant it before you make sure that no one is garden. Well, but you can take risks if there are five players with you, right? But I don't know. It's tough. It's tough. They cleared garden now, so good for you. But the turret should have been set up before, and it should be set definitely set up right now. This is the moment where you have so much time to actually use your utility. You should have had your T, uh, your um, turret already ready. Let's say you plant it right now. What do you do with the turret? Put it here. Put it here. Put it here. Put it like even here. Right? So it alerts you. And then, without exposing yourself, you can put nanosome, bounce it from here, use the nanosome to make sure that people are not pushing. Like, I would probably use the turret on site just to make sure that it sees people that are pushing to, to, the, to, the, um, to the spike. I know exactly. Remember that KO Grenade only deals damage if it sees people. Uh, one goes through TP right now. You probably called that. But Raze is stupid. And see? You are dying with two nanosomes. And you could have used them to stop the people from pushing. Oh wow. I mean, yeah. Oh Jesus. And he had an ultimate. <sighs> but you didn't... Wait, did you use your turret even? You didn't use your turret. You didn't use an anosomes. That's... And I'll swear to you, not using this utility is the reason why you lost the round. Doesn't matter what other people, people do. Just let's straight up ignore that they misplayed, right? We want to learn how to play efficiently ourselves. And you right now didn't play efficiently because you didn't use the turret, you didn't use the nanosomes.
I get scared of getting caught with my pants down utility out when AMs are pushing, but I see I need to fix it. But you had a time. I don't have to, um, I don't have to, uh, like, rewind it, right? There was moments, like, before planting, of putting the turret. You could even put it on top of site before planting, because you're not exposed anywhere. Right? There are moments when you can find the utility to be used. And there are moments, of course, when you have want to have the gun out. Yeah, this turret doesn't really do anything, right? The same point that it did before with, on pistol round, with, with like, using the turret here, right? Or putting it for anti-flanks and so on. Right now, this turret doesn't give you anything. Wait, what, what happened here? You're being exposed to showers, right? Because I would advise if you have a composition like this with no smokes, maybe you should, as Killjoy, just go showers. Put a llama bot on, on here, right? So they don't get flanked. Or even turret. You can even maybe put the turret in here so it has range, right? Like here. And then you go into showers. To make sure that you can get showers control. Because every round that I see here, if you don't kill yourself, the sage from showers, you're getting fucked by her. I thought we were rushing in. Yeah, but the thing is, you're a killjoy. You can be you can be like the flanker of the team. And you can be taking a lot of a lot of space as well. And also remember that this sage feels so confident into peeking this because she knows that no one is pushing showers because most likely she walled off the showers. If you destroy the wall, then she's not as confident because, well, maybe I'm being flanked, you know? When you tell him to use the utility in certain moments, he's going to focus more on utility than on shooting, which is even worse. That's the entire point of this VOD review. Like, I explained when to use the utility in that situation as well. Okay. Mm -mm -mm. is lurking now. Mm. That's unfortunate. Also remember, like, you you are a killjoy. You don't have to push first. And there's a lot of situations when you're, like, kind of pushing like first, you know? You hear oh, a I'm trap here, on. right? Three, two, one. Mm, this is not a good moment to take an orb. I'll be honest with you. This is the moment where you should be pushing with, with your teammate. Specifically also because you're the one with a phantom. Okay? Putting the nanosomes right here is unfortunate. Your entire kit for 600 just got destroyed with that one thing. But... Like, I can understand why you're using utility, because you're already here, but now think about it. You should have been with your teammates on site, and you're, or you're only late to the site because you were taking the orb. And you're the guy with a phantom. I I'm gonna ignore the fact that Kayo is just a moron, but, like, you should be here. You should be here. How the fuck did he move here? Without making noise. What? B. That is some unreal timing. That is some unreal fucking timing. I didn't hear a single step. I would have been not prepared for this as well, to be honest. But you should have been with the team on the site instead of taking the orb. But that's that's fucking unlucky. That's some unreal timing. Clutch. As good as their skill. Now we have your ultimate. Let's see what's your plan on, for ulting. For you, he called CT, but he was pocket already, actually, right? I don't think so. Because he killed the Reyna. 
Look. And Reyna... Like, Reyna looks at that... Look, Reyna is looking at that angle, see? She's literally looking at this angle. Yeah, he's CT. He's right now on the minimap, he's CT. In this moment. That is some unreal fucking timing, man. Not gonna lie. Unreal fucking timing. Ah, right, you're on a lower buy, so you're not, you don't want to use your ultimate. By the way, remember that if there's a trap somewhere, you can use your turret to trigger the trap from the cipher, because it's a physical object. Just a random note. You could use your nanosomes to make sure to, like, handle some backside. Because right now with the classic, you're not really helpful. Your turret is nice, right? When this is available to your teammates, most likely no one is going to swing you from, this, from those angles. And KO is going to use the grenade here. You should probably think about lobbing your, your nanosome here. Like, bouncing it from the wall. And... Make sure that you just deal damage to those people playing backside or even throwing it into CT like to try to like just move away people from this angle. But clearing backside on the like here right now, look, you're, you're looking at an angle that no one is going to peek to because this deals so much fucking damage. No one is going to be here. So you can use this moment to throw a nano swarm and do it here. See, that Cypher would have been damaged by your nanosome because he was standing there. You're ultra-focused on putting those nanosomes on, on the spike. This is the moment, it's a 5v3, but you have no gun. This is the moment when you know that Cypher is also on site. You go... Uh, fuck me, I wanted to put it on the minimap. You should be going into the elbow with the Reyna and put the, and put the ultimate behind the wall. He, fuck me, it's rotating minimap. Right. Right here, this is your moment to use the lockdown here to guarantee the win. The, you put the alarm, uh, you put your lockdown here in this spot, and you just wait. And then those nano zooms were gonna have an actual effect. This is like still really losable, okay? But this is not a good positioning, and uh, you want, you know why? Because right now, it doesn't matter like that you have a deeper angle, because what only matters is that. If you put this, this lockdown from here, it still affects the entire site, but people pushing elbow have a harder time to clear it because it takes so much time. One enemy remaining. But I like the fact that you went for the lockdown. It's just, you could, you could literally just change it change the position that's about it and look see this is another thing that you do you're looking at something that is being covered see raise is looking at the hook already Note down your observations, then let's run it again. All right, let's see. I actually play a very slow B. If I can get some kicks off on A, just go okay. Don't make play. play B for now. Okay, your first time going into showers. Ooh! So, you peeked into showers so late that the moment you peek with the knife, you could have been dead because that that's where someone could have been standing right now. Be ready. Like, that's the moment when you should have your gun out. Again, no, not a single piece of utility used from you yet, right? You should be, like, committing to someone. Unfortunately, Kildra is a character that is very static. 
you can be like going left right left right but you should commit to like one lane and use your utility for that lane because of the range of the utility oh, yeah, I should lay long. I'll find you. go with your teammate be a little bit closer what happened I know exactly where you are. They're blind with fear. Time out. That's it. You're being too passive. You're not helping your teammates. That's the thing. Right? Like the fate was clearing corners alone. And you, you were just behind her, but not really doing anything. So she was literally just kind of alone. I would probably spam it as well, but not maybe as many times. Because you run out of bullets and someone could peek you. They... And this is a very good example of why why you shouldn't go into hookah with the spike. You see this? If any of you, killer of, of Fade, would have the spike, you would have just TP to A right now. Very good example. Ten seconds left. You need to push that and try to kill the guy. Ten seconds left. Well, Fade literally solo solo queued this round, because even though you were with her. Not in a single moment, you were close enough to actually play with the fade. Right? Think about huh? this. Like, she was so far away from you that even if you were next to her, you couldn't help her. Right? This is a very good round for you to analyze and be like, well, actually, I didn't have any impact this round. You know? And don't worry about it. This is the moment to learn. Like, those things, you have to cut them, like... Faste. What is it called in Paul, in English? The things that that like grow in your fucking garden that you don't need next to your fucking grass. Just weeds? Okay, well then no, I don't know. Oh Rena, can I get that orb in uh so I can get my orb? Nice hit. Can't make this shit up. <laughs> Can't make this shit up, bro. Oh. <laughs> Fuck me, bro. Oh god. Okay, we got a little bit lucky here, but it's good. Probably not peeking is the play. Oh. Oh god, chaos holding a fucking. Flash. Anyway. Oh, he died. Wait. I want to. I want to see this. He's not even looking short. Short, <laughs> short. He just. He just died to short by not looking at it, man. Use your util. He's on it. He's on it. Oh god. Oh god. This fade had a fucking had a fucking eye. Could have. Oh fuck me, man. Sees eye everything. Holy shit. Oh, yes, I am Polish. All right, let's run. Let's see. Uh, this is a very good re vote review, by the way, garbage. Because I think like you can learn shit ton from just this single VOD. Like, there's so much stuff to learn from this. Oh, yeah, I can buy you an action anyway. Can I blind us in? You know how to play counter flash, right? I know that it didn't do it before. But the way you played... Actually, you already played. So you know how to play it. When the omen used the paranoia, you played it correctly. Here, you didn't play it correctly. Right? And you're alone with the spike. Okay, good for you to realize that. You can still play long. Call a teammate to you, right? Call like, race, come with me long. I need support. I have spike or something like that. You can use that to like push long because you cannot go fucking fall into hookah, man. This turret also doesn't really do much. Because you're going to have to recall it, right? See? Plant the spike. Plant the spike. 
Now, this is the time to put the Denosomes on Spike. By the way, you can put those Nano Swarms also here. Those are the spots where you can put the Nano Swarms before being spotted. Just FYI. But now, you don't know what the guy is, when the guy is, where the guy is. It's the last round. All of you are fucking low HP. You're the only one with 150, and he has a bridge ult. You cannot, and because of those two Nano Swarms, you literally cannot stand on the spike or on the site. Going showers is the play. Good. Like, this is unlosable. This is unlosable if you just don't pick. Even in a like, if you, even if your three teammates are dying one by one, this is literally unlosable. Where is he? Off your feet! I, I mean, yeah. Now you know his team. There's no reason to pick. You want to build good habits. This is a good habit. Well played. So, what we learned? What do we learn from this? First, what you need to work on is the pizza cut, right? Pit cutting the pizza. You need to work on cutting the pizza, right? That's something that you really badly need to work, uh, uh, badly need to work on. It's so important for you. Like, I feel like it's one of the, your main things that you need to learn. Like, when you, when you go into showers, right? This is a very good example because there's not many pizzas to cut here. Like, you check this corner, you check this corner, go here, go here, hold the angle like this, then you swing here, hold this, you go here, like this, that's what I, this is the typical movement that I do. I hold, still hold this angle, when I'm close to the wall, I'm hugging the wall from this side, and checking if I can see a foot here. If there's a foot, there's someone close. If there's no foot here, that means I can just move, and not even check the corner to the left. So, this gives me certainty, right? There's, of course, awkward timing that someone can cross the moment you're checking this. And then, when you have this, I mean, you can't really ping the map to land this, right? But you can, like, literally sometimes just ping yeah. the map to prepare for an angle, and you'll be like this. And you have the cross already ready for, for the head, right? But I'm, I'm gonna cut the, the corners here into three pizza slices. One, two, three. Right? That's something that you need to work on. Ah, oh, epic pen. Okay, nice. That's something that you need to work on. And then another thing uh, that we learned is that you focus on on utility usage sometimes too much. Hello? Okay. You focus on the utility usage sometimes too much and sometimes not at all. Right? And when you focus on doing something, then your game doesn't follow because you turn yourself off in that round because you're thinking too much about something. You should always, always focus on yourself and how do I play this round effectively, right? And in many rounds here, you are not playing even for yourself effectively because you are kind of like holding an angle that is already um, checked by someone else. You are looking at a wall in a moment when someone needs your help. Like, that's the thing that you, you need to, like, work on the most, in my eyes. That's about it. Hopefully, uh, you enjoyed it. And you can learn from this a bit.